The history of Malmesbury Abbey is a long one, and there are many tales to tell of the celebrated monastery. Founded by the Benedictines in 676, part of the abbey still survives today, over 1300 years later. But it is the abbey's connection to John of Tintern, a cleric described by one historian as probably the most corrupt and disreputable monk of the entire Middle Ages, that stands out as the most fascinating story. Let's travel back in time now to the 14th century and meet the outrageous monk whose crimes included brawling, theft, fraud, arson, kidnap, and murder. That's right, today we're looking at the mad mass murdering monk of Malmesbury. Welcome to Medieval Madness. Malmesbury Abbey. Today, Malmesbury is a town in the charming Cotswolds, an area of outstanding natural beauty in North Wiltshire, England. It is famous for its Norman Abbey. The Abbey site was chosen by an Irish monk named Mael Dub as a retreat for the education of local children, and the town grew up around it. Saint Aldheim made his home there and established the monastery, becoming abbot in 675 and dedicating himself to a life of learning and spirituality. The King of Wessex, Ethel Stan, was buried at the Abbey, which became an eminent place for academic learning under the instruction of abbots such as John Scotus Eregina, a philosopher, poet, and theologian, as well as the prolific writer Aelfric of Ancient. Around 1110, the bones of Aldheim, Malmesbury's most precious relic, were split up and a large portion of them were given to Abbot Faratus at Abingdon Abbey. It seems that Queen Matilda, wife of Henry I, had a hand in this, as Faratus was also physician to the king. So Abingdon became home to Aldheim's whole thigh bone, with part of the head, one tooth, and part of the shoulder blade. Winchester was also raided so that Abingdon could receive the shoulder blade and an arm bone severed from the skeleton of St. Ethelwald. In 1153, Henry Duke of Normandy, who later became King Henry II, stormed the town of Malmesbury, at the end of the civil war between King Stephen and Henry's mother, Empress Matilda. When Henry's army arrived, the people of the town fled to the walls and went to the Abbey Church for sanctuary. Henry's troops ignored the concept of sanctuary, and on entering the church, they massacred the people of Malmesbury who had taken refuge there, along with the monks. On a lighter note, the medieval historian William of Malmesbury was the foremost English historian from the 12th century and spent his whole adult life at the Abbey. He wrote about the monk Elmer of Malmesbury and his attempt to fly by launching himself from the top of the Abbey. Elmer had read the Greek fable Diodalus as a younger man and, quote, fastened wings to his hands and feet and, collecting the breeze upon the summit of a tower, flew for more than a furlong, but fell, broke both his legs, and was lame ever after. Yeah, I suppose it is pretty lame not being able to fly. Starting small. John of Tintern began his criminal career by fighting in 1318, at least that is when he first popped up on the records. John was still a young man, but already a monk when he accompanied William of Badminton, who had become abbot of Malmesbury in 1296, and became involved in a brawl in the town of Lechlade. The two men were not alone though in their fight, about 40 other men, also from Malmesbury, were involved in the riot. Hostilities were caused because of an argument over land and money. Malmesbury was about to begin an extensive expansion program and urgently needed to obtain cash from somewhere for the project, and it was with that money that the top part of Malmesbury Abbey was built. John, it seems, was not just a godly man of religion, but a businessman who was not afraid to use any means, including fisticuffs, to get what he wanted. For his ambition, John was dragged up in front of no less than King Edward III, but for some reason John was excused for his mini-rebellion and the Abbey benefited from having a grand upper sanction built. The Secret Stash The Dispensers, father and son, Hugh Senior and Hugh Junior, had stashed a great deal of their money with the monks at Malmesbury as they fled west to Wales. At the time, the Dispensers were high in the favour of King Edward II, but things don't always go well for royal medieval favourites, and when Edward II was overthrown in 1326 by Queen Isabella and her lover Mortimer, Hugh Jr. was hanged, drawn, and quartered, and his father was beheaded, dismembered, and fed to the dogs. Now, the monks had a big problem. Not only were the dispensers on the losing side, but they were also dead, and the Abbey had their treasure, a massive haul of £10,000, worth around £9 million today. The situation could be seen as an inconvenience or a blessing, depending on which way you looked at it. Either way, the monks kept quiet about their windfall. 
It was a good 10 years later that Malmesbury Abbey found itself embroiled in a controversy involving the huge sum of money, and it was John of Tintern and his boss the abbot who were at the centre of the trouble. Unnamed people made an allegation against John in front of King Edward III at Clarendon Palace, and John was detained for certain misdeeds. He was held for a short period in August of 1337 by the Sheriff of Wiltshire, before being granted bail and released. It wasn't really clear until April of 1338 what the exact nature of those misdeeds were, and exactly how much dispenser money the monks had concealed at Malmesbury, until John was again hauled up in front of the King at a court meeting. This time, it wasn't for fighting, it was for, quote, being in collusion with his superior Abbot Adam, because they had failed to declare possession of the dispenser treasure. Astonishingly, the Malmesbury monks, for whatever unknown reason, were granted a pardon by the King although he did of course confiscate the 10 grand. This getting away with it is all the more surprising when you consider the amount of monies involved and that the whole revenue of Edward III's government in the years 1330-31 to 31 was less than £40,000. Gilbert of Berwick, who just happened to be the Sheriff of Wiltshire, was also named in the scandal. He was supposed to be in charge of law and order in the county, but seems to have somehow ended up with a further £1,000 of dispenser money in his possession, having had strong business links to John. Perhaps Gilbert had been asked to look after the money, just in case. Mysteriously, the sheriff was also cleared of any wrongdoing. The Clerical Crime Boss in 1340, John of Tintern was elected abbot of Malmesbury, but this didn't change his criminal ways. Just a few years later, John was involved in a bitter rivalry with Ralph of Combe. Ralph was lord of the manor house at Lee, just a mile away from Malmesbury. John, along with the help of Henry of Badminton, not only committed arson by burning down the manor in an attempt to intimidate the lord, but he also abducted Ralph's wife Margaret and took her away. It would seem that Margaret had previously agreed to her kidnapping, and she and John began to live together quite openly for seven years after the abduction, even though John, as a cleric, was supposed to lead a celibate life. Not only had he broken his vows of celibacy, but now he was an adulterer too. Allegations against John of five specific murders and two arson attacks were made by the local people in 1343, and he was accused of operating like some sort of gangster, who was never present at any of the murders, but instead hired other men to do the dirty work for him, such as Henry of Badminton. Another one of these men was a fellow monk named John of Rodborne, who, it was said, acted like a lieutenant to the abbot. Rodborne was the monastic steward of Malmesbury Abbey, but that didn't stop him from employing the services of another hitman named Richard Talbot. Getting away with murder. An official government inquiry into John's dealings began on the 17th of March, 1343. It was headed by Robert Parving, a senior judge. After listening to the evidence, Parving believed that there was a strong case against John, and because of this, King Edward III ordered the abbots to be arrested. John, aware of the accusations, had already gone on the run, and so a warrant was issued against him and 37 members of his criminal gang, including his willing mistress Margaret and her maid, Joan Chaucy. Eventually, they were caught and taken to London to face trial. At court, motives for the murders seemed to be unclear, except for the case of Robert Phillips of Brinkworth, who was a tenant of Malmesbury Abbey. In September of 1331, John, along with Gilbert of Berwick, moved against Robert, seizing his lands and securing his imprisonment. However, Robert was doomed when he was released, and the men attempted to kill him in 1332. According to the King's Bench documents, John wanted to kill Robert so that he could give his land to his old friend Gilbert. On one of the counts against him, John was charged that he, quote, felonously broke and set fire on Monday after the Feast of the Purification of the Blessed Mary, and seized and abducted Margaret, with the help of Henry of Badminton. Sheriff Gilbert of Berwick, who had earlier looked after a portion of the dispenser war chest, was also accused of colluding in the murder of Robert Phillips, along with John of Robborn, who appropriated himself with Richard Talbot, who was a common disturber of the peace and a known manslayer. John was said to have used the services of a George Salyman to beat and kill men, and William Balsam, a renegade monk, who was also named as an accomplice. It was obvious that John was guilty of every kind of felony and transgression perpetrated, and the court even accepted this as a fact. But astonishingly, he was also still pardoned and released, but only after he had paid a huge fine of £500. A guilty conscience. 
The exact cause of John of Tintern's death on 8th of August 1349 is impossible to determine. Although the year of his demise is right in the middle of the Black Death epidemic, so there's a really good chance that it was the plague that carried him off. The Vatican archives show us a little glimpse into the mind of John and how he may have had a crisis of conscience before his death. John applied to the Pope for something known as an indulgence. This was a religious practice whereby a person gained church approval for absolution from all sins at the point of death. It was a normal transaction during the Middle Ages and was granted in exchange for the offer of money. It meant that John was able to buy forgiveness for all of his sins and considering how many sins John had committed, we can only assume that his donation to the church was a hefty one. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Medieval Madness. Please subscribe if you're enjoying these videos, and I'll see you next week for another one. Until then, hope you have an awesome week. Cheers!